physically to me, like Shandong, guys and girls really, have always had really strong set jaws. Uh -huh. The jaw lines might come from chewing. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel knows his history and he has just proposed a crazy theory. <laughs> Northern Chinese food isn't nearly as popular as Southern Chinese food is in America yet, but we think it has a lot of potential. We grew up mostly with our father's culture, which is primarily from Hong Kong and Shanghai, but over the years, we got to understand our mother's Shandong roots. Back then, it wasn't as common to have parents from the South and North because, you know, they're far apart, traditionally speak different dialects, and eat different food. So, today we're with our Beijing Connect, Di Zhao, to explore the most popular dishes from different regions of Northern China. We are here starting the first leg of our Northern Chinese excursion. Of course, we've got the ancient one, Di Zhao. Originally from China, I was, uh, I was born in China and uh, came to the States when I was nine. So basically, you've been kind of our yeah. Chinese uh, tour guide. Our first section covering Northern food because there are four main styles of northern Chinese cuisine. Dongbei food in the north north is more influenced by Russian food and in the far northeast is more influenced by Korean food. So right here we got the Kaoyang Pai. Lamb is very fatty. You want a fattier meat to keep you through the winter. The reason why we're putting this in the Inner Mongolian category is that they do eat a lot of lamb ribs, but possibly uh, it's probably flavored a little differently. Spicy, Spicy lamb, lamb ribs. ribs. It's kicking with flavor. Spicy, oily. It really uh, tastes of cilantro. Dude, oh, this is good. This is one of the best ones I have. For me, I think it's, I don't know, it doesn't quite hit the spot for me. I mean, it's like a two and a half out of five. Uh, Damn! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Man's from Beijing has high standards. All right, moving on to our next Dongbei dish. We've got the Yang Rou Chuan. In actual like Dongbei, they probably wouldn't marinate it this much. This is one of those dishes that I feel like is eaten all over at least the top half of China. I think the Yang Rou Chuan originated out of the north or west, yeah, which is like Xinjiang, Lanzhou. Right. More of like a result of the Silk Road, right? That's right, yeah. So the lamb that you get from Mongolia might taste gamier. It's gamier, yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes complete sense to be honest. Damn, David, you cleaned off the skewer? I like it. I recommend people go get the lamb skewers. Moving on to our third Dongbei dish. This is a much heftier sausage. It's a Harbin Hongchang. Harbin, Harbin sausage. sausage. Texture is mushy, but the flavor's not bad. The aftertaste is really the pro here. Almost more than the first taste you get when yeah. you hit your tongue. There's a smoky aftertaste. It's garlicky. It's smoky. Oh, it usually goes good with this. Is you make a dipping sauce out of black vinegar with garlic. I'm giving it a four out of five. To me, this is so far out of the three dishes. Compared to what I've had in China, this is the most authentic one. That looks like a crazy mess, but it's actually a jigu jia, right? So what, is, what it is, is the bone structure of the chicken, right? So after you've like sort of uh, filleted the, the, the meat off, the, the, they take the leftover bones and they stir fry into another dish. Okay. This had a lot more of a soy sauce marinade and spiciness to it. This is flavor. definitely something you eat when you're drinking like Baijiu. I'm terrible with eating things off the bone, to be honest. Okay, here. Zhou Bing is a general Northern Chinese thing. dish, like in the North especially, yeah. It almost looks like extra fried. This might be the only <laughs> multiple layered meat dish that I've seen, period. Jing Dong Meat Pie. This is definitely higher quality in terms of the way they spice the meat, the meat quality itself. It's pretty simple, a lot of like uh, onion and pork, it's layered in between, so you get different textures, crispiness on the outside, you kind of get a chewiness on the inside. I agree, I think it's also interesting that if you look at the, uh, I mean, this is a takeout version. This is a takeout version. There's not a lot of juices sloshing around the bottom. I give it a 4.5. I was a fan of that Jing Dong Rou. Mm. What about this right here? That to me looks like a Taiwanese shodrabi. When a lot of people use this as a carb to accompany their meal, yeah, I think you just order this dish like towards the end of your meal. In the north, growing up, you didn't necessarily eat rice every meal. Yeah, we had more dough based, whether it was a noodle or like a dumpling. Right, and those noodles are specifically wheat based. Yeah, wheat based. What was your guys' favorite? For me, I'm still going with the Kao Yang Pai. For me, it's definitely a close one between the Jigu Jia, the fried cumin chicken bones, and the Jindong Rode. So for me, I think this, this Jindong meat pie definitely was a surprise. We are moving on down more to the inland zone. How do you describe this zone? Tianjin, Beijing. I think it's Huabei. On, on to, to the, the next, next one. one. So here we have our Shandong spread. But we have two different types of Shandong food. We have inland Shandong here with the Huangmenji, and this is very interesting because this is a chain yangs, right? Huangmenji. 
This is a spicy one. If you guys look up the cooking process of the Huang Menji, they actually have to they cook the chicken twice. But do you like the spicy version or the non-spicy version? I actually like the non-spicy version better. The thing that throws me off the most is that this is a rice dish and it's supposed to be from Shandong. Oh, okay. The first time I saw Huang Menji because in China was in this like really grimy place that I think I left a bad taste in my mouth. What do you think about how Yang's is like coming to America? It surprised me, it surprised me. When I walked into the store, I was like, this doesn't feel like a Huang Menji Mi Fan that I, I've seen. If I walked into Huang Menji Mi Fan for the first time and it was that store, I probably would have a different perception. Still a 4.5. Moving on to some general Shandong food. Let's go with the Shandong beef roll. Adding the beef in was a little bit more last think, couple years. Yeah, I think the beef is maybe a more of a modern take, but this, the idea of a Juan Bing is a very Shandong thing. I mean, especially, there's a tian mian jiang in the middle, which is a very Shandong thing. Shandong beef roll. This one is more tian mian jiang, which is a little bit saltier. The art of the dough is so key to this dish. And I recall actually eating these when I was younger. Like, obviously my mom's side of the family is from Shandong. What they would normally do is they would just take giant stocks of green onion. They'll just wrap it in this, uh, in this bean. Oh. Daniel, you are the only person I know that ate this growing up. <laughs> so there, that is history. You got the, uh, Jiu Tai He Zi. This place's dough is so chewy. You can tell this is a Shandong restaurant. This is like thick dough skin. It's almost like represents the thick skin of Shandong people. You can't say it's tastier than the more fried versions, mm -hmm. but there's something about it that's uh, more homemade. Moving on, you guys, we got the... Uh, this is a Zhou San Xian, I believe. Yeah. So it's got a shrimp, pork, and a uh, leek. Oh, I can definitely recommend that one. Yo, so much. Such, a, such a great balance between the seafood, the pork, the leek. This is the pork and fennel dumpling. Pickly radish dill yeah. flavoring. Between the pork and leek already, those are my favorite ingredients for a dumpling. And then you just add on fresh shrimp. That is like one of the best dumplings I've had in a long time, actually. Yeah. All right, you guys, they say Shandong people pop these like peanuts. Oh! Ah! Shandong da hai! Oh my gosh! Wrapping up our Shandong quick excursion, we have the Zhajiangmian. This should be your favorite, man. This is one of my favorite dishes in the world. My mom made it growing up. A very dark bean sauce. I just love how the cucumbers and the grains will kind of balance it out. Mm. Daniel, do you have a favorite style of Zhajiangmian? Because I know there's so many different regional variations of it, almost like pizza. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a fan of Beijing Zhajiangmian. Just like mom's. All right, you guys, we have done a zigzag. We went all the way from Harbin to Liaoning, Shenyang, all the way down to Jinan, then we shot to Yantai, and then we're back up to Tianjin. So here we have a fresh Jianbing. Tianjin Beijing style street wraps. They put something extra in this. They put fermented tofu. Usually what I've had with it, they'll put, it's like bean paste and some chili, but the fermented tofu, it's way better as a substitute. That is a good jambing. This is in my top three jambings I've had all time, probably. Of Whoa! all time, and this guy used to live in China. Of a regular plain jambing, that was the best one I've ever had in my life. To end off this crazy food tour <laughs> with the mahua. I've not had actually fresh fried mahua. Do they dip it in something? They let it soak in something? No, nah, they were just eat it straight up. This is it? Yeah, this is it. Oh, all right. It's crispy, but actually this is still pretty light. I know it sounds crispy and it seems like it'd be very bready, but it's not the case, actually. Actually, more flavor than I thought. Today, we explored many different facets of northern food. The thing about northern food, everything's very home style. You get together with your family and you share a, like, this kind of very family-oriented meal. The other interesting thing that's uh, different with northern food versus southern food is like, southerners, food is like this delicacy, whereas in the north, food is like a tool for survival. When we were looking at the uh, the Shandong Juanbing earlier, I was like, you could probably just have that Juanbing for your meal. Is the possibility for northern food to penetrate I guess like the Western palate. Cause I know for me, the one thing about Southern food, even though a lot of people eat it, is that it's been heavily Americanized to make sure it fits like the Western palate. I think a good example is like, Xi'an Famous Foods in New York, I think it's, you know, it's taken off, right? Uh, and that's an authentically Shanxi, which is like a Northwestern food. So I do think there is room for like uh, Northern food to, to sort of hit mainstream in America, just because they're great as a like single entree. I think Northern Chinese food in America gains so much more popularity because I do think it kind of fits the Western palate pretty well. Um, a lot of Americans wheat. like wheat. Uh, Americans eat wheat. Americans like bread. 
This is more bready and doughy. Americans like strong flavors. They like barbecue sauce. The North probably does Chinese barbecue sauces. Mm -hmm. The most like tangy and the most like strong, you know? And There's then, also that age old adage, right? Where it says like, uh, what happens when you eat Chinese food? You're hungry again after like a couple of hours. That's a good that point. would not happen with Northern Chinese food. No, yeah, that is true. <laughs> there is so much dough in northern Chinese food. You will not be hungry not for a be while. Hungry, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. We kind of wanted to sit down with our Chinese Connect friend, Daniel Zhao. Please let us know in the comment section below. Number one, have you ever had northern Chinese food? And number two, another provincial cuisine that we need to explore. If you guys are into Chinese food, I hope you guys like that video a lot because, you know, we just like talking about Chinese food. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Then you're doing a lamb, a lamb bone <laughs> commercial. You gotta hold this up. Yang Bao Chu? <laughs> <laughs>